being a business owner. And that is a no. filing cabinet. No. Biggest waste of money ever Why? on the face think of the be planet. Great. You put all your stuff in there. Okay. I have three file drawers on my desk at work. And yeah. guess what's in them? And now. <laughs> aye, aye. I'm the captain now. <laughs> Coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California. This sounds great. You sound amazing. I always sound amazing. It's the world famous. Everybody sit off like BFS. Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening, everybody? How are you doing today? You know, thank you so much for listening. And I am Chris. And I'm Christine. And welcome to episode 148 of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. Oh, fantastic. It is getting late here on a Monday. We are it's Monday after evening right now as we record this. Well, it's like Monday late time because uh, we didn't get to podcast yesterday because we were busy because it has been a super very busy Busy filled week and weekend. I don't know how else to say it other than busy one more time. Nonstop. You know, I feel like when I go back to work tomorrow morning or tomorrow evening, I guess, I feel like I need another vacation from being off. Oh my gosh, Chris. (laughs) Vacation, Chris. I need a vacation for my weekend. Except you're going to go on vacation in two more weeks. I am? Well, I think so. I mean, birthday week is coming up for you pretty quickly here. That's right. Exactly, exactly two weeks from today is your birthday. Did you know that? What are you getting from me? Uh, I meant my th- present. I'm talking to the listener listening right now. What are you going to get? For oh, me? no. You just said, what am I going to get for you? Uh, my presence is gift enough. I show up every day for you. You do show up. You, you put a lot of effort into everything you do. <laughs> I <real>. do. <laughs> well, that's my gift for you. Congratulations. Uh, open it up. There you go. Happy birthday to well, you. Well, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate this. <laughs> Mr. I- Mr. Radio Personality, thank you so much. You're and like- our top 40 hit is. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a goofball. And the number one song in America playing right now. <laughs> well, how was your week, Chris? Oh, you know, it was busy. Uh, work has been kind of, you know, chaotic. You may not know that gas prices here in the San Diego County area, uh, probably all of California, I would think, are really getting like, like they're pushing the boundaries of what you really are want, willing to pay for gas. Yeah. Really, it's like it's like maybe I'll pay that, and then like it's like, wait, do I want to cut off my leg or do I want to get a gallon of gas? Wait, cutting off my leg is less painful. It's funny. <laughs> I saw this. I saw this Instagram or TikTok video today where this guy was getting his car jacked, and the guy was what like, does that mean, jacked? Like he was like. Stealing, like getting to break into his car, like he was getting robbed, right? Oh, okay, got it. And the funny thing is, the guy's like, Well, you're taking my car. You're taking my car. He's like, no, I want your car. I want the gas out of your car. I care less about your stupid car. <laughs> your car ain't worth nothing. The gas was worth everything. I've seen people that have like started to tape their gas tanks closed so they can tell if other people have like opened it. That's easy as untape it. I mean, <laughs> I guess, but I filled up yesterday. So because I've been doing a lot of driving around i think it was my third gas tank in um like a week or a week and a day and so i had pumped in because we had the rental car last weekend too i've put just in one week four hundred dollars into my gas tank in the rental car tank four hundred dollars in one week yeah that's like me and one fill up but yeah i get it yeah well no but you don't go less than half that's true i you know it's a funny thing is i think i'm like cheating the system or getting a good deal but really i'm not no it's the same money in the long run exactly is whether i fill up once or i fill up twice yeah it's same gallons it just doesn't feel like it hurts as much maybe it doesn't smaller quantities yeah when you go there you fill up it's only a hundred bucks Hundred bucks sounds like a lot. I know right. hundred dollar fill up versus a two hundred plus dollar fill up. I mean, it really. Uh, gosh, I, well, we need to get the inside scoop from you, Mister Petroleum Company Fuel Truck Driver. What is the reason why the gas prices are going so high? I mean, did you guys just get like a major raise or something? Is that what we're all paying for? Did you buy a Ferrari and now California has to pay for it? Yes, they all gave us all Ferraris. Everybody <laughs> works for the company because they such, do such a great job. And they got money burning out their butts. They just want to get rid of it. No, but it's so crazy because like during COVID, we had all of that oil that was in those tankers off of the coast. And there were, it was like surplus because people weren't driving anywhere. And now it's like, I don't know if it's the opposite or if it's just like what's happening well, a couple of things, really. I, you know that Biden did shut down the pipeline and, and, and all that stuff. What are you talking about? 
Uh, oh, uh, I don't know if you heard or not, but uh, President Biden and his uh, policies have really shut down the um, he wants no drilling of any kind in America. When when Trump was president, he was like, drill, baby, drill, drill, whatever you want. So we had so much oil. We don't know what to do with it. Now we're kind of uh, relied on other countries to supply all the oil to us. But that makes no sense. So, I thought that like Texas is like huge for oil production. I think they are. Now, if you'd ask the Biden administration, they would say, oh, no, they've got the green light to drill, but they're taking their time. They're just greedy. So truth is, nobody really knows what the truth is. It's oh, that yeah. both sides say both sides point at each other. Like the, the oil companies point at the administration saying they're not letting them do their job. And the administration is pointing to oil companies saying they're greedy and they're taking all the money. And they're Well, that big pipeline that they created years ago, I know that there was huge issues with it because it was um, it was running through tribal lands, indigenous communities that were like like holy. I don't even know how you call it, like sacred grounds that are like very important to the indigenous community and speaking that today is indigenous people's day. Like that's something that we need to recognize that we should be able to like fuel our vehicles without having to decimate the land of a sovereign nation, like the tribal communities. And so there has to be a way around this. I mean, we just can't keep paying this amount of money for gas. It's just but you know what's insane. funny is that California is the only state or maybe a few other ones, but California is the one that's like dollars ahead of the on the price wise from like Arizona. Well, or wasn't like, there like a big gas tax that just came in too? That has something to do with it too. So I wonder if you live like close to like the Arizona border or Nevada border, you just drive across the border and get gas and bring it home. Like that's what I would do. But you know? I don't know. Can you do that? Well, it's not like they're going to check your tank. They may, oh, good point. You know, you drive across, they may ask you for fruits and, fruits and vegetables or whatever. But if the same guard keeps checking every single time, like, what do you keep doing every week? You keep going across the border. Ah, I, got a I work lives, over there. My girlfriend lives over there. I don't know. <laughs> That's why you can say whatever. But the thing is, I don't think they ever check your tank. The only time they ever check your fuel tank is if you have a diesel vehicle. They'll do the, um, they'll dob, they'll get a little sample of the fuel and put it in like this little, um, like a little test tube and put in the light. If it's pink or red or any kind of pink or peach at all, Fine. You're fine. Everything has to be sucked out. Big fine. It's like a few thousand dollar fine. What? Yeah, because there's two types of diesel fuel, really. Well, there's three now. Wait, does this happen for every car or just like random checking? Uh, Only for diesel vehicles, usually. Usually it's for trucks. Trucking companies, usually. Oh, like semis? Yeah, for that sort of thing. Uh, They'll check the fuel. I haven't had it checked in a while, but they do do an inspection. They can check it. They will check from time to time. The reason why is because there's something called red dye diesel fuel. It's exactly the same as... Uh, regular diesel. In fact, it's the same stuff. The only difference is there's an ink dye red into the fuel itself. The reason why they do that is so they can physically mark the diesel. Now, the reason why I do that is because the red dye has absolutely zero tax on it. Oh. It's for off-road use only. Oh. For equipment, for generators, things of that sort. But sometimes the foreman at the job site, what they'll do is in a pinch... They'll get some off of their whatever. They have a fuel tank on site for their equipment. They'll, mm-hmm. they'll splash them into their uh, personal vehicle or whatever. Oh, wow. H- hopefully, it'll flush through the system and then it'll kind of burn its way out before anyone gets caught, you know. But what happens is sometimes a filter actually will get the pink residue will end up on the filter, too. So, they change the uh, do oil change on the thing. Wow. <laughs> They're like, what is up with this? I see it out here, you know. So That's um, crazy. Yeah, I had no be, idea. Yeah. Semi-truck drivers have done it on job sites from time to time. And yeah, I heard it's like... This is a long time ago, but I heard it was like a three thousand dollar fine. That's crazy. Plus, you got to suck everything out and refuel it. And the cost of fuel today, just the fuel alone, was thousands of dollars. Jeez, that's <laughs> crazy. Well, I, you know, I imagine that you've been. Well, I would think that you would be slower at work because of the gas prices. But has it actually been pretty consistent? Um. Well, this last week, it, it's weird. Our, for me, anyways, at work it has peaks and valleys where it's like really busy. But there's times when it's really slow. So I think it's weird. Some some days of the week, it gets busier than others. And I know that Friday used to be a real busy day, but it's kind of tapered off for the most part, which is kind of weird. So Fridays haven't been as busy as they used to be. More like Thursday is like the really busy day. Like it's, yeah. And Thursday, like slams on Thursday. And then Friday, it's kind of like a mediocre to easy day. Mm-hmm. But I think because of the prices being so high right now, that 
people are either trying to work from home. If you if you have a job that lets you work from home, like right now it's seven dollars a gallon. I totally would take advantage of that. You yeah. Know? Who, who wouldn't right now? Yeah, you know? it's definitely been nice. Although with all of the weddings, they've been, you know, been track trekking all over the county. That definitely adds up. So, um, I'm you know I'm glad to hear that you have a steady job. But you know, it really sucks for the economy that gas is getting so expensive and. Especially since we're going into a weekend coming up of travel for us, I am leaving tomorrow early, early morning to head up to my hometown because my nephew and his sweet, I was going to say gr- girlfriend, but fiance, Hallie. It's still technically a girlfriend until right, they're married. But you know. they're getting married on Saturday. They are so cute. They've been together for like ever. Did you say like high school sweethearts or even before that? Before that, she was in eighth grade when they started seeing each other. Well, seventh and eighth grade. Really? Yeah. And they broke up for like one little spell. It was like just a few months. And then they got back together and they've been together ever since. And now he is, I think he's 12. 25 and she's 24 and uh yeah they're just like a year apart and they're great you know very you just bought their first house together oh nice they have he's a sheriff she works at a pr firm a marketing firm um but i'm going up uh since i do work remotely i'm going to be able to work remotely for the week and help my sister in the evenings get ready for the wedding because she's hosting the rehearsal dinner and um, just going to be around my family. And then, you know, you and I, we were looking at the cost of what it would cost to fuel your truck up. So it's from here to my hometown, to my parents' house, it's 350 miles one way. So I could make that on a single tank. Could you? Oh, yeah. My truck gets like 600 miles on a tank. I thought that it didn't. No, it gets. Well, okay. If there's any hill, if it's all flat land, like it's all, not flat land. Well, no. if it's all if it's all flat, like. Most of the way, you can get like five to 600 miles on a full tank. And that's talking from full to empty. Uh, that's a little gauge thing tells me. So I know for sure I can get it all the way there, you know, on a full tank. And then, but the problem is, it's not like the gas is any cheaper up there than it is down here. Right. But okay. So now we're going to have a little, a little issue, mister, here, because when I asked you what it was going to cost to fill your tank up, you're like, Oh, it's going to take two tanks up and yeah. it's going to take two tanks back. No, one tank. And then no, it's two tanks be, total. You told me it's going to take two tanks up and two tanks back. And it's going to end up costing us $700 in gas. Probably. Yeah. No, it wouldn't. So we but ended up what we're doing is we're flying you and the boys up there on, on a one, private jet yeah. no, on a one way ticket. And uh, then I'm going to have you guys come back home with me. So you get the adventure for the first time of taking Jacob and Mason through the airport and flying just the three of you. And I am crossing my fingers that you don't have a panic attack. You know what? I think I'll be just fine. Don't, I just hope that the kids aren't like buried their faces into their phones while we're trying to check in and get through security. And they get, won't be, you know, and get to like the different checkpoints. I think for me personally, once I get through the checkpoint of security and get into like that, I call it the airport lobby area, mm-hmm. <laughs> the airport check-in, but the terminal. I call, yeah. What do I call it? Airport check-in. And uh, then once I find the spot we need to be at, and the airport here isn't that big, so it's probably pretty easy to find the actual like, Yeah, you're just going terminal one to southwest. So it's yeah. like only a set of gates. Like you look at the screen uh, and it tells you where to go. And I'm taking all of your clothing and suitcases with me. Wow, how nice. So literally all you and the boys have to do is hop on the plane with your phones and your headphones and maybe a tablet and... Like the boys don't even need to take a backpack. They literally can just take their chargers and their phones. You know, I've heard of somebody, I don't know, I heard this from somebody or something where if you travel for a very, very long time, you just have your clothing shipped like FedEx or something. Yeah. Is it cheaper than flying with like a, like a bag? Because you figure where the bag costs it. But if you were flying with a big giant, like two big giant suitcases, what would it cost to fly with that? Like, a- um, It just depends because they only give you like 50 pounds on each one that's comped or right. included for whatever the price is. And then you pay for overweight. But um, yeah, I mean, there's some people like if they're going. I said they're living somewhere. Else, yeah, they're like if they're going to move. Oh, of course. If they're going to move somewhere for like six months, then ship your stuff ahead of time. Like it's easy enough to just box everything up, ship it to wherever you're going and, you know, have it there waiting for you when you arrive. But in this case, I mean, it's basically the same thing. I took you guys upstairs, had everybody give me all of their clothes. We went shopping yesterday for dress clothes. Uh, the one thing that I do need to get is um, nice socks for the boys. But, 
you know, we made a compromise. They wanted to wear suits, but they want to wear tennis shoes with them. Yeah, that's a style, you know? I mean, I would rock that too if you let me. Yeah. Hint, hint, and, hint, hint. Uh, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, come on, babe. But, you know, that's what the compromise is for the boys. And I think it's just fine. But I think everything's going to be great. It's going to go smoothly. But uh, Clover Bear and I are hopping in the car and we're going to start our adventure up to Fresno tomorrow morning. And uh, then I'll just be working remotely from up there for the week. You know, she'll be just fine. She likes riding a car. She'll be she'll be great. You know, a little companion, you know, hanging out with you. You reach behind her, give a little pet on the chin, pet on the neck, you know, on the head. Yeah, I'll give her some snacks, like some little treats here and there. And then I'll stop and let her go potty every once in a while. But I think she's going to be just fine. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And so, hey, so you had a uh, couple big weddings over the weekend, right? Well, I had one wedding and I had a work event for my main job. And then, um, yeah, I just it's just been busy, 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 mostly with my main job, because like for a while I was able to just it kind of coasted and that work didn't take me a lot of time during the day. But Things are gearing up and I've been put in charge of a couple of pretty high profile projects. And so today I had to work in the office. Oh, what was that like? huh? Oh, goodness. The I, horror of going back to the office. No, huh? it's fine. It's just I lead teams. And so like this morning at 830, I had my team together and we it was our monthly meeting. And so I had to prep for that last week. And then I had to lead everybody and um, like prioritize our action items. And then my deputy superintendent came in and she was observing the meeting and just like chatting. And so um, there's this big new statewide legislation that came out that's going to impact my work, I guess, in a positive way. So I'm leading this thing. It's a data dashboard implementation. And um what we're doing is we're monitoring the progress of English learner students in acquiring the English language, which it's really hard to find tools that monitor that, but we've created one. And so I'm leading the rollout. Well, I mean, it's perfect timing because just last week, the California state legislature just passed a law that every school district has to publish a report showing that they are tracking the progress of English learner students and the elements that were outlined are exactly what we're already doing. So we're in a really good position to where it's getting a lot of statewide attention. And so things are getting busier because I have to prove that this works and we're scaling it and we're successfully implementing it. And so while I'm trying to get these districts on board with their data, I'm also because I used to run the whole project by myself. I'm having to train a team of eight other individuals they're like basically it's like imagine that you have employees and like it's OK. Perfect example with your trucking company. Right. You know how they're consistently like changing things and like you'll go into work and it's like, OK, now you guys have to do all of these reports on tablets. But, you know, you've told me before, I wish that somebody would just like sit with me and show me how to do it or make it super easy to follow along with because there's like no manual and it takes so much time. Like, you know how you say that, right? Right. Yeah. OK. So what I'm doing is I'm creating the manual basically for what they need to do to implement this data dashboard. So I'm creating like step by step when you're going out and presenting. Here's what you can say. Like, here's how you would introduce this topic. You can massage it and come up with your own words for it if you would like to. But then I create the presentations for them and all of the toolkits that go along with it so that when I sit down with everybody, I'm saying, OK, here's everything that you need to, first of all, feel prepared. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to use the tool. I'm going to tell you what you can say as you're explaining the tool. Then I'm going to give you the slides with the screenshots so you can walk people through using the tool. And then I'm going to train you on how to do it. And then you have to go do it. So it's just like a lot of different steps, but it's... Um, yeah, is it possible to make it really simple, like make a simple version of it? Like, well, yeah, it is. Skip simple. out all the fluff, like stuff they don't need to know. You yeah, know? it's very simple. It's actually very straightforward. It's like, on the screenshot of the um, dashboard, it has like, I put three like bubbles around the three things like that they need to focus on. Like on this screenshot, look at this, this, and this. And here's what it's for. Next screenshot, this, this, and this. Now go navigate the dashboard and look for those three things. And then let's talk about it. And so, oh, nice. Yeah. But I have to do all of that prep work. And this year, our goal is to get. 35 of our school districts on board with that tool and then to scale it because we have 43 districts. So 35 
at least, and then to scale it outside of San Diego County um, with 15 to 20 districts. And so it's a lot of work because... Well, that's why I make the big bucks, Dr. <laughs> Christine, over there. I know, but that, that's only one of my projects. But that one's taking a lot of energy right now. And so um, today, when I was at work, I had to lead that team meeting, and then I had to go into another meeting, and I had to prep all of these resources. And so when I texted you when I got off of work, my brain was so tired, and I could tell that I was on the edge of being cranky. So I just texted you and I was like, when I come home, I need to go straight upstairs and rest and have quiet time for like an hour. And I need to have a quiet ride home because I need that so that when I come on to do the podcast, I could feel like I have energy and I'm excited. And I also uh, fed you tonight. So I took you care. Did. I cooked dinner. You like, cooked dinner. You got me roses. You were yeah. a rock star. That's right. Well, thank you. Tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> you know, I will brag on you for a minute. So I did ask for your help over the weekend because I was so busy. Uh, you put my laundry away for me and hung it up, which was super helpful because I, then it made it easier for me to pack. You did another load of my laundry. You cleaned out the studio for me. You, I mean, you did the dishes, which are your dishes hey, anyway. Hey, they're the house dishes, no. I want to say. They're, they're in the house. They're in the no, house dishes. No, they were yours. But my point being, it was really, it really helped me feel like we have a tight partnership because you didn't complain. And, you know, sometimes you're grumpy, but I know you've really- Sometimes I'm, What? <laughs> What are you talking about? But I know you've really been working on figuring out how to be more supportive of me since I've been working so hard and just wanted to let you know, I noticed and I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. That means the world to me that you actually didn't notice. And you I appreciate did. It. It, does, it means so. I love doing nice things for you. I really do. It really brings me so much joy to know that I can do things that make you smile. And oh, happy. yeah. But and as I, long as I say thank you 17 times for it. No need. No need. Babe. You know, I mean, I know, you know, I know you thank me. I know, yeah. I know you're deep in your heart and soul. You really, in my heart and soul. You're so funny. You really appreciate everything I do and say. I really do appreciate you. And I do appreciate what you've done for us. And, you know, one of the things that I think has been really helpful lately is like trying to figure out how we can you know, figure out our house budget. And we've been working together on like figuring out um, like expenses and things like that, because especially with inflation, things have started to get super expensive. It really has. You know, and the funny thing is we moved in here, like simple, simple things like the gas bill and electric bill. Like I had no idea the water bill. I had no idea. Like everything over here is like triple the price. I was paid at the other house. It's yeah. For, for but they reason, told us that when we bought this house, they said, be careful because the water prices are way more expensive here. And I didn't believe them. Well, I, not just that. Is it also like, like, you know how it was funny when I bought my, I had my apartment, like I had the air conditioning, had a central air system in there. Like we have here. And I ran it during the summer, during the hot months, ran it, whatever usual. So when I got to the new house, like I was sticker shocked mm -hmm. when I bought the other house, how much it was that I immediately ran out and bought solar, solar, yeah. <laughs> solar for the house. So when we come from there to here, we're thinking, well, it can't be any worse than the other place. Right. Because this place has solar. Dun, dun, dun. I know. What's up with that? Right. But, you know, one of the things that I think is helpful for everybody to look at as the cost of things have been getting more expensive is things that they're paying for that aren't really necessary or that they're paying for that they aren't using. And we're going to talk about that when we come back right after this. If you love music and podcasting, now you can have both. Introducing the brand new K2 radio station, available 24-7 on the Live 365 app for free. Specializing in rock and alternative music, we're talking bands like Coldplay, Nirvana, Muse, Imagine Dragons, and yes, even the Rolling Stones. They have all stopped by to drop off songs, and we even have brand new popular tracks added every single day. Also on the free K2 radio station, we are including podcasting. Get the best of both worlds. Download the free Live 365 app or listen online at live365.com and type in K2 Radio. And welcome back, everybody. And, you know, if you have a household budget, you're probably thinking like, you know, how are some ways that we could probably save some money considering that everything is super expensive? If you've been to the grocery store lately, prices are high. If you've been, you know, if you filled your you know, car up lately, lately at the uh, gas station, you know, that prices are fairly high. So uh, there's probably some things that you probably buy that you probably could uh, skip out on. Yeah. You know, what's so interesting is I think I had mentioned last week or the week before that my bank account had been hacked. My credit card was hacked. 
And so there's a benefit and a drawback to that. When it was hacked, of course, I mean, I'm irritated because I don't have my debit card. However, the benefit of that is all of these little subscription services that I had been like subscribing to, once my card is no longer valid, the money is no longer being taken out. And I'm now getting these emails like, oh, put in your card number to renew your subscription for this. And finally, I'm like realizing how much money was being taken out every month for all of these little different things that I was paying for on a monthly basis that I never even used. Like, do you have anything like that? Um, like, cause no. like subscriptions and things. No, I'm usually pretty good at that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm usually pretty good. Well, I find a way to use whatever yeah. I, I subscribe to. I, I know I got a few things on here. I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, you know? Yeah. Well, today we have a list. You love lists, right, Chris? You know, who doesn't love a good list? Now we all love a list. Now this list is a list of 14 things we all buy but we probably almost never use. Yeah. You well, know? I can't wait to hear this because I'd like to see how many of these things I've been discovering from for myself over the last week and a half. So well, take just, us in. You just mentioned online subscriptions. Yeah. Now that is, uh, we're going, you know, the first one they have on the list is online subscriptions. Like and what then, kind of online subscriptions? Like online magazines or something? Yeah, they're talking about every, all kinds of stuff. You find there's like websites for every hobby and interest, you know. Of course, TV services fall in the yeah. same category, like your Netflix, your Hulu and you know how many Netflix, how many like different, we did an episode on this years ago about how many different like streaming services yeah, there are. Yeah, there was like 200 or something like that. You know, there's so many okay. of them. So now I'm going to reveal what have I been purchasing on a monthly basis for online subscriptions that I haven't been using. So the first one, um, and I don't know if it falls under this category, but I got suckered into something and you're going to die when you know how much. Oh, don't tell me the timeshare, wasn't it? No, no, no. It was um, a flight pass through Alaska Airlines. And the deal was, and I thought it was so great at first. It was like, you spend $400 a month and you get one free flight every month. You are if, very inexpensive. Yeah, if you're flying Zeke back and forth every no, month. No, but I couldn't use it for Zeke. It was only for, for me. What? 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 It was for me. But you could you could schedule it like up to 90 days out. So uh, here I was like doing my research and I was looking at, oh gosh, because it's like you only pay the taxes. Um, and you can book up to like the day before or like two days before the flight and you're guaranteed to get the lowest published fare. And I was like, OK, well, here I read the details and I was like, this sounds great. So I purchased it, not realizing it locked me in for 12 months at four hundred dollars a month. And then and you could the buy like you fill your car up twice for that. Right. But listen, no, four times for my car. But. When I went the first time to use it, because it was like a week before I needed to be somewhere. And so I went to buy the ticket and you have to still like it gives you a discount, quote unquote. But when I went to book the flight, it was actually two times more expensive than if I just would have purchased it. Not with the flight pass program. It was going to end up costing me what the four hundred dollars, the four hundred dollars a month plus. It was going to cost me eight hundred dollars for a flight to Fresno. What it would normally cost two hundred dollars, probably like one hundred and eighty, right? But not like a, a week before. But the published rate for the week before flight round trip was three hundred and sixty, and they were going to charge me eight hundred. So the benefit of having my card hacked and having to get a new card number is it canceled that subscription. So it was now, funny you say that. The same thing happened to me too when I had a uh, dating website that I was paying for um, years and years. This is way before, like mm -hmm. a long, long time ago. And it, it uh, this is back when my broke days where like when it took that 30 bucks out, it like wiped my count out. You oh, know? wow. And I was like pissed off. And I was trying to figure out, I called the bank and freaked out and all the stuff and everything. And eventually they said, here, we'll just give you a whole new card. And those things, things will kind of work its way out. Yeah. <laughs> they told me it'll sell itself. Well, so here's the things that I figured out that I've been paying for every month that I haven't really been utilizing. So Audible, I used to listen to a lot of books Wait, on. You got to pay for that? Yeah. You pay for credits every month. Oh. So I would pay for Audible. And, you know, I haven't downloaded books that I listen to for like ever. And then I had... um Okay, so Paramount, because that was a streaming service, or Peacock, one of those two, I was streaming because there was a set of shows that I wanted to watch on there, and then I forgot to cancel it. So there was that. The Flight Pass program. So Audible's like $24.99, and then um, I had the um, $400 Alaska Airlines, and then the like $8.99 for Peacock. So like we're getting up there already. 
Then I also had accidentally double subscribed to Adobe. So I was paying Adobe like for Acrobat and like Lightroom for editing and for like PDFs and things like that because I have the pro account. Wow. Look at you. Yeah. Fancy pants over there. So then that was like another $14.99 times two. So there's all of these little things that I'd been subscribing to and I've been calculating it up. And I think that even though I got hacked and they took money from me, which I did get partial credit back. It's actually going to save me in the long run. But what if you need those services? You're like, oh, I, I need don't, that. I oh, don't. Okay, These okay. are things that exactly like I've been paying Especially for them and not using. Especially stupid airline thing. My gosh. I know, you know like, right? I mean, you can buy a ticket for that, you know? Or two. It's so right. crazy. So when I was like, because I've been trying to get out of that subscription service. I spent one day on the phone trying to get it canceled. I was on the phone on hold for 47 minutes and they never answered my call. And so now it just like worked itself out. <laughs> there you go. You know, you save a bunch of money, you know, yeah. you know, happening. You know, I mean, I guess you could have called each one and canceled each one, but they always give you the run around like, why are you canceling? Oh, no. And, you know, the, cancel here. Call the number to call here. Cancel. Yeah. You know, it's a big pain in the butt. But, you so know, I have a question now yeah? that you're talking about this list. So one of the things and I am I thought that I saw this on here. It, that I've always wondered about is like purchasing warranties. And I know we just had our home warranty since we're at the one year mark. Actually, we are like three days away from the one year mark of when we purchased this house. And so our home warranty is coming up for um, like for renewal. And you well, said that they called you and that they were like doubling the price of it and everything. Well, yeah, what happened was is that I get the letter in the mail saying, hey, why don't you continue your home warranty service with us? Here is the new rates. And then here is the new price. You got to do it. And I'm like, wait a second. Wait a second. The last couple of times we had the guys come out and fix something, it took forever. And then we ended And they up, didn't even really fix it. Right. And then the, the last thing we were going to call on was the microwave. Mm -hmm. And then you end up just buying a new one anyways. Right. Because it was just going to take too long. And so, yeah, we didn't even use it. So our warranty is on the list. Yes. The very nice thing on this list is extended warranties. Now, uh, when we talk about extended warranties, it's that the problem is that when you buy anything, like say at the store, they always try to sell you. If you, if you go to like Best Buy, they'll try to sell you the extended warranty on a toaster or even a pencil. And you're like, no, I'll just buy a new one. I don't care. Why don't, you know? Yeah, Walmart does that all the time. They're like, do you want to pay $9.99 to get the care plan on it? And I'm like, no, thank you. Th this is literally a, a $20 product. I mean, yeah. I, I think, I mean, I mean, no times are tough right now, but I think I'll be okay. And besides, <laughs> I'll probably want to buy the new one when it comes out. Yeah. The new toaster. I may toast better. I don't okay, know. Okay. So what's funny about this is when I took the boys, when we moved into this house to Walmart and I was helping them pick out like the different decor they wanted for their room they wanted these led lights i don't know if you've seen them chris they're like those they look like hexagons and they stick to the wall and they yeah, light up different colors right well i bought those and i don't know they're like 20 dollars for the pack um for each of them and they're like well do you want to add the warranty on for 7.99 the boys are like yeah 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 we're like no because you're going to get tired of them before <laughs> it's even time to renew the warranty. Right. Like, why pay the extra $8? I wonder how much money those companies are making on extended warranties. Well, speaking of, of warranties, I watched a whole video on this, especially with automobile warranties, because the automobile warranty ones are the big ones. They try to make all their money back at the dealership by selling you the warranty. And the thing about the warranties is this, that the, I forget, the, the, there's a formula for it. It's like for every 10, like say vehicles, for example, say like every 10 vehicles, that come off the lot that buy warranties, only one really needs a major warranty done you know, service where they actually have to pay like, you know, 10 grand worth, mm -hmm. of, worth of stuff on there. Right. So it's only a, you know, one, it's like only 1% or 10% of the entire, uh, I don't know where I'm going with this, but the point is this, is that, is that it's, it's a big rip off. It really is a big rip off because you think about how many times have you take your car and we actually use the exterior extended warranty and I've paid for the, the actual damage that the extended warranty would cover if they even would cover it at all. Yeah. But, most of the time you take it in and you're like, uh, yeah, I have an extended warranty on my vehicle. And they're like, oh, this actually isn't covered under it. This is right. like exempted from it. And you're like, but wait, it like literally says the engine is covered. Oh, well, this is covered to the engine, which is, you know, added on aftermarket or whatever. And it's like, oh, and then there's also a deductible too. It's like a yeah. hundred dollar deductible usually on top of that too. I had that problem too, but like I had my other truck had a, a new engine rebuild, but it was done under the regular warranty, not the extended one. Right. The uh, the extended one probably would laugh to my face. I was like, Get out of here with that. <laughs> but the thing is, those extended warranties are so expensive. They're like, I think I bought my car. I think I paid like because I was a sucker and I bought the extended warranty. And I think I paid like $3,000. That's for that. crazy. Because you think about it, like, I know $3,000, you know, is a lot of money. You think, well, they're going to replace the engine. 
This is, you know, but the odds of that happening, like, unless you put sand in the engine, don't, you know, change oil ever, the chances of that happening are like slim to none. <laughs> so you're basically paying for a $3,000 warranty, maybe fix something that's probably worth a hundred bucks yeah. or 200 bucks, which you're probably going to fix yourself. Well, I'm sure that there's some cases where an extended warranty is valuable to but have. But the odds but, aren't in your favor. Right. So, you know, definitely when they're presenting you with an extended warranty, whether it's at a car dealership or on an appliance, like think about what else could cover that warranty. Because I know like if you've purchased something on a credit card, sometimes like if something breaks within a certain period of time that they'll replace that. Um, Also, there's like manufacturer guarantees on certain items. And so just do your research instead of just throwing your money away because, you know, especially right now, every dollar counts. Right. And also too, like if you're going to buy, I guess it depends on how big the purchase is really, you know, you know, like if you're buying like a $50,000 car, you know, I mean, things do break eventually and those things they do wear out, I guess, eventually, but you probably should, like Dave Ramsey always says, you basically have money in the bank, say it's set aside to fix if something were to go wrong on that vehicle. Right. And also be very careful with your maintenance too. Take care of your maintenance. Don't let it go, you know, 50,000 miles to no oil changes. <laughs> Why are you winking at me, <laughs> dingbat? 50,000 miles between oil changes. It was only five. 100 million. No. Well, okay. So what's next on the list? Okay. Next on the list. I have never owned one of these things, although I always wanted to. And I think you probably would need one being a business owner, and that is a no. filing cabinet. No. Biggest waste of money ever Why? on the face of the planet. Great. You put all your stuff in there. Okay. I have three file drawers on my desk at work, and yeah. guess what's in them? Trash? Yep. And junk. And broken, like, mouses and things like that. I never use it. And what's interesting is every one of us has um, storage cabinets and file cabinets on my floor at work. And... They had a um, an announcement a couple of weeks ago that everybody over the next month needs to go through and purge because they're going to start phasing them out. Really? Yeah, because they're like, if you think about it, there's a hundred of us that work on the floor, and every one of us has at least one file drawer. Well, what do you do instead of the file drawer? What hey, we keep keep track of all your stuff? We don't have papers anymore. Everything's digital. Nobody prints stuff anymore. Oh, they give you a thumb drive or what? No, just we <laughs> save everything to Google and to OneDrive, and so. Like we have, I had this um, whole file cabinet to myself. It was like the vertical ones, the really long ones that, um, wait, vertical, horizontal, horizontal, the ones like side to side, not tall. So yeah, they're the, the, long... the ones that kind of crank out, like they have a cranking system. Where they mm-hmm. crank and the whole wall moves out kind of thing. And they no old man. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, that's like <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock movies. Um, but I think that they're a waste of money because if you think of it, we're in a digital age and what I would say people should invest in is like cloud storage space and like secure cloud storage space. But that requires you to actually scan. Like if you have paper documents, you physically have to No, but scan. you don't have paper documents anymore. Everybody does like you Adobe don't? sign what? and everything. Well, oh. You're the only one that does paper, dude. I print, I'm printing out the paper right now. I print everything I out. I know. And that's why I was like, we don't need that. Just but put I, it on but phone. I do, but, but on my defense, I do recycle though. I do throw it in the recycling when I'm done. I don't throw it in the trash can. So it just goes to a landfill to, you know. No, it goes create. to recycling for more other paper to be printed. <laughs> for more other paper to be printed. Okay. What else is on the okay. list? Okay, the next one they have here is now this is a classic. Now this was probably really popular. Well, say what it is Come during on. COVID. Their Amazon lockdown. We're talking here expensive home exercise equipment. I'm talking okay. to you, Peloton. Peloton, <laughs> you know, and they had major layoffs lately because no after oh yeah, because after COVID, there wasn't the demand anymore, and they'd grown their workforce because they were like everybody's buying Peloton, and then it was like the Peloton bikes, and then like oh they the were Peloton so popular. Trainers. Oh they were like the oh yeah, but it wasn't even just like the bikes. Then they like moved it into like the Peloton yoga mats and like the all of this other stuff and yoga mats. Yeah, like fancy all kinds of stuff, and then they started to have huge layoffs because they would built up like they grew so big and so fast. And they hired all of these people, not anticipating that there was going to be a bubble. Well, they also, too, like came in at the right time. You know, like it was a if you were locked down during COVID, you had to be shut down, quarantine, all that stuff. Like and you had the money to do this and the space to put a machine together, whether it's Peloton or any kind of exercise machine. Mm-hmm. You were totally buying that because you couldn't, couldn't go to the gyms and you wanted to work out and you wanted to be healthy. Right. Because a lot of people were sitting around playing video games, watching Netflix all, you know, all week long. Right. You know, you want to do something. You couldn't go outside and run. You probably can go outside and run, but no people want to do that in Minnesota, I think, in the winter. Maybe not. <laughs> but it's so funny you mentioned Peloton because I was just dropping off some wedding, wedding items that were left over from one of my clients' weddings. 
and they'd opened up their garage for me to give them their wedding stuff to put it away. And what did they have in the corner of their garage covered up collecting dust? But a Peloton. Well, they used it for laundry, though. Put laundry on it. Like, no, they like have like a, a mat on it, like a, I don't know, like a weight mat or something. But it was like kind of covered with stuff. And I was like, oh, well, I would love you. Like, they could just give it to me. Well, speaking of giving things like that away, they did say that if you're going to look to buy any kind of equipment like that, buy used. Now, some people freak out because it's used stuff. They don't want to touch it. But trust me, you probably can save at least 50 percent, if not more. From the cost at Peloton, they're not using it anyways. Yeah, so. I just wonder if it comes with like the same services. I'm sure you could figure out how to like swap. Hey, if ownership. you're getting a Peloton for hundred bucks, I don't think I care. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? As, as long as, it as works. the little TV works on it, that would be cool. Yeah. Well, what else is on our list? Hey, speaking of newborn babies and kids and running around rugrats. We weren't <laughs> speaking of that. That was a nice attempt at a segue. But I try my best. Uh, well, no, but I I do have a niece that's having a baby. That's what I meant to say. Yeah. You got it right there. And so, I, I was just um, thinking of buying her some baby stuff. But, you know, there's some crazy baby stuff out there right now. Is there now? Like, what's crazy about baby stuff? Well, I mean, I mean have, have, they, have they come up with something different than a bottle and like a diaper? Has they reinvented that yet? Yes. So, okay. There is this baby it's like a bassinet but i i'm trying to remember what it's called but it's um so it's created by um ford motor company is like on the back end of it because it has a motor that goes in it so it's this thing and it's it's like very expensive and it sits on it's a bassinet and it sits on a like a base that goes it's like i don't even know how to describe it but anyways it has, um, it's intuitive. So when it senses that your baby is crying or moving and they're supposed to be sleeping, it vibrates and it rocks them gently to put them back to sleep. It's a robo rocker. It ba- basically is. And so anytime that the baby's moving, it's, you know, trying to put them back to bed or put them back to sleep. But those things are like $1,500. Hey, if you're rich, you know, but hey, wait, wait, if you're rich, wouldn't you just hire a nanny? Well, I, exactly. Yeah, That's the think- thing is so many people were buying them. And then their oh, babies. Oh, maybe because they could have the nanny come over because of COVID? No, but people were buying them because it was like the hot new thing to buy. But then their babies outgrow this thing within three months and you've just spent $1,500 on it and the baby can't sleep there because now they're too big for it. So what are you going to do? Well, I guess you got to sell it. You know, we had, a, we had a storage unit that was completely filled with all kinds of baby crap. Me like, who? Like myself and I. At, at the storage unit, when I uh, moved out of the apartment, I had to get a storage unit and all the baby junk got thrown in there. And it was like, I don't think any diapers, of course, but it was like all the baby, like those little like walker things for the kids and all the little buttons and the colorful. I blocks know. And all that crazy. Junk. All that junk was in the storage. And eventually, I think I just threw it all away or gave it away or something. But the thing is, with baby stuff, obviously, like, do you really need to spend money on a baby wipe warmer? Yes. You know? Or fancy fuse, shoes for your child, like those, what are those no. kids, Air Jordans for your child that could barely even walk right now. Oh my gosh. They cost the same price as regular full size ones. Okay. So what's so funny is I love to watch Cardi B on Instagram. Like I follow her and she's hilarious. And I get to see like the birthday parties that she throws for her kids. And I think her baby just turned one or two and had these like blinged out, very expensive Nikes and like, a fancy outfit and like a gold chain on. And I'm like, oh my gosh, the baby's like one. They don't even know any different. Like, this is so crazy. You know, we we had for Jacob when he was born, uh, had these like socks that look like shoes. They were like, they had the the whole uh, shoelaces part Uh and everything on them on the, on the part. And Hey, they're socks, but they look like shoes. So, you know, the kid's not going to be running around anyways, but if if they got to the age where they did start walking outside, yeah, of course you put shoes on their feet, but when they're crawling around, you know, who cares? They don't really care about that. It looks great for the pictures, but yeah. yeah, I see the next thing on the list is cookbooks. So, uh, why do you think that they'd say that cookbooks are something that is a waste of money? Well, let me tell you, I personally can vouch for this one because I, one year for Christmas, I believe, my mom bought me a crock pot. And she's like, honey, you're going to love it. It's going to be so easy. You just put stuff, the stuff in there and you got, oh, there's even a, I'm buying you a book that comes with it. It's a crock pot book and it's super simple. All this cool stuff. And I'm flipping through the book and everything looks like the menu of the best restaurant in town. I'm like, oh, this all looks great. Look, you know what? Have I ever used anything from that crock pot cookbook? Just, t- just No, just but you ask. use a crock pot. I've never used a crock pot in my life. You use a crock pot. Oh, 
<laughs> I never used one before. And the, and the Crock-Pot cookbook, I definitely don't use. And if you are going to look up something, just look it up online. Like, hey, Crock-Pot recipes or whatever. That is very true because whenever I'm looking for a recipe, I don't go to for a book. I just say, oh, hey, Google, da 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 so what else is on There's that There's got to be lots of lister cookbook stuff, I would think. You know, recipes, all kinds of stuff. Now, speaking of working out. We weren't speaking of working and out. And using equipment in your house. Oh, my gosh. You are like the king of the worst segues tonight. But if you wanted to go to the gym and pay for a monthly membership that you're never, ever going to use more than just me once, then you can go right ahead. But uh, gym memberships is on this list, of course. Oh, yeah. Especially after New Year's. You know, everybody, what do they do? They like rush out and they'll get these, you know, zero fee sign on specials. And then it's like, you know, $50 a month or something after that. And then they go to the gym for like a week, but they're locked into a year contractor. It's always the suckers or it's always like, oh, I don't want to cancel it because I'm going to use it. And then they never use it. And then it keeps well, it's like, that gym, like that gym equipment they got in the garage collecting. Dust. I know, right. Same thing. You know, America I, has commitment issues. <laughs> well, we all do. I think it's a problem. You know, uh, when, um, I was to drive by the 24 hour fitness that was on the, one of the roads I was driving by, like right out, like week after new year's, you couldn't find a parking space in the entire parking lot. <laughs> it was so packed, but come like March, that place is like whittled down to nothing. I know that some of the people that go to the gym regularly, they hate it. They hate February and March and, and January. They hate it. They like going March, April when everybody, all those guys are long gone. But, um, yeah. You know, I, I personally have never have gone to like a gym membership. I've never spent money on that. It's because you just look hot naturally. You know, I, somebody just asked me, you know, it's funny. I was on Twitter the other day and someone was saying like they were working out at the gym or something. And I just said, I go to, um, what I say? I, I go to um, the gym of um, genetics. <laughs> That's a good one. Okay, so next on the list are planners and journals. And so I have a little beef with this. I mean, I don't buy paper planners because I keep all of everything in my calendar on my phone. But I love a good journal. And I always say like when Jeff, uh, Zeke's dad, asks for like ideas for Christmas for Zeke to buy for me, I say, oh, I always love notebooks and and journals. I don't like the ones that have like the you know, daily, weekly, monthly. I like the ones that just have lines on them because I take them to like client meetings and things like that. So I use those, but then after I fill them up, I just throw them away. You know, it's funny you say that. I did find a journal that was brand new recently. I found one. Oh, unfortunately, it was from the year uh, 2010, I think. A <laughs> journal or a planner? Planner. Journal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, those kind of things. So like I get them. I had them actually passed about one year. I got a bunch from work or from somewhere, you know, they're the small ones. Like you put in your wall, like checkbook size ones. Right. And I had housekeepers coming to my house to clean up and I would get, it was like during Christmas time. So I actually like gave it to them as like a thank you for cleaning the house. Even though was oh my gosh. You're like the notorious <laughs> regifter tipper. Oh, totally. Oh. I think she, she looks at me like, oh, gee. Thanks. Like, this is so, th I, I I went out and got that for you. And she's like, wow, thank you. It was funny when I was using this house cleaning company, it was never the same girl every time. I thought it was, it was a different girl every week, which is kind of odd. Threw me off. So oh, I thought you were going to say turned you on. No, th threw me off because I didn't you said know. said turned me off. No, because then I got to explain like how I want things clean every single time. They don't get familiar with the house, that kind of stuff. First world problems. Total first world problems. You know, I should put up my planner. I should get a journal and write all about it. <laughs> okay. So the next thing on the list are single use appliances. And I think that we are pretty good about not purchasing like random appliances. And this is talking about like a snow cone machine or a cotton candy maker or like those little random like would novelty pop, things. Would popcorn maker count? Um, no, because we would use those more than once. But the one thing that I did get tricked into, like I bought into the hype into buying was an Instapot. And I it's the pressure cooker and everybody was oh, like... Oh, it's like a crock pot, right? Right, kind of. But everybody's raving about how amazing they are. Oh, I you cook thing. Thanksgiving dinner on it, right? I did potatoes in it. And I've done... Like I did the potatoes the, for the mashed potatoes. But what's the machine you use to cook the turkey in? Oh, that's a big roaster pan. That's different. It's yeah. the same kind of concept, no, right? No, because no, that one's for like large parties. But what the Instapot is, is it's a pressure cooker and it's different. And I can never figure out how to do it quite right. So I've used it only twice and it takes up a huge amount of space in our cupboard. Yeah. You know, um, what well, we growing up, we had a bread maker, you know, my dad had one, he made bread all the time, you know, like I think cause it was a novelty idea item. Funny how he got the bread maker was that at those like home shows or the fair, they, 
have these drawings, you put your name in a thing, you win a prize. The prize at the time was a, get this, a car cell phone. Not the ones you have today, <laughs> but actual one that got built into your car. Yeah. And we're like, we don't need that. So we knew a guy that was in the bread maker business. And my dad did a trade. He traded the car phone for the bread maker and he got a bread, new bread maker out of it. But we use that thing like he cooked fresh bread every single night. He had the recipes. He had the yeast. That's he had, awesome. He had all, yeah, we did a few tricks here and there. We used it for like, you know, fancy bread and like but basically it's like a basic white bread a lot. And the funny thing is we had a bread maker. I had one here recently or at the other house. I think I just gave, got rid of it, I think, because I never it just got dust all over. It. I never used it once. Yeah. And just got rid of it. But I, I thought it'd be kind of cool to have one and make one because it brings back memories from my dad made bread all the time. But. Yeah, but I yeah. see all of these ones, especially around Christmas time. When you go into Walmart or Target and you go through like the holiday section, they always have those like novelty appliances and it'll be like uh, the, you know, hot dog maker set or, you know, dip hot your hot dog maker set. <laughs> exactly. It's like, you know, grill your hot dogs and grill your buns at the same time or they'll have like. The, you know, make your uh, make your own s'mores kit or the fondue sets or things like I that. Have, I have both. Of them. I, I don't know. I might have had a fondue set. But I definitely had the s'more. I kit. had the s'mores kit and I used to love that when Zeke was little. We used to make it all the time. But then it's like in between uses, it just takes up so much space in your cupboards. And then it's eventually you get to the point where it's like, OK, what is I don't use this, but maybe once every five months is it worth it, you know? Right, but you're only buying it once. It's not like a monthly subscription. Imagine, imagine if it was a monthly subscription to a to, to a, a s'more maker. Or <laughs> Appliance a month kind of club. <laughs> right. <laughs> What's next? Okay, the next thing is when you travel, like we were traveling this week, you know, is travel accessories. Now, if you're going to go on a trip, I guess this makes sense, but what are they talking about here? Okay, so it's saying fancy passport covers, money belts, and packing cubes. Uh, oh, like your iPhone like cover for your phone. You put the little cards in and stuff. Like, no, like I have the fancy passport covers. I have leather passport covers, all of these things I buy. So I use the- Do you, fanci- need, do you need them for your passport? I is think there, so. Is it required? Well, no, but here's what it has is it has the RFID technology in it. So when you're traveling internationally, if you don't have the RFID protection on your passport covers or around your credit cards, people can lift your information. It's very, very easy in airports for people to steal your identity. And so- I got the passport covers, but I only have one of them and I put all of our passports in it. So it's not like I get one for everybody. Oh, nice. And then yeah. um, the money belts. So we do fanny packs instead because the money belts is where people get like the skinny money belts that they can stick underneath their clothes. So like it's hidden oh, away. Is that when you steal like millions of dollars? You want to smuggle it in your pants when you go through the no. TSA and they can't find it? No, it's like for people that are afraid they're going to get pickpocketed. They're like really slim versions of a fanny pack like they just look like they're a little bit thicker than an envelope and they're on an elastic band and you can just stick them inside of your pants or like inside of your clothes so that nobody sees them and so then they can't snip them and steal them Um, and then packing cubes so i've heard of 50 50 packing cubes are those things where you can like strategically fold and pack everything so it makes your suitcase easier to fit everything in there uh, I've heard sometimes that those are really good to use, but then other times I hear that people actually end up overpacking because of them and getting like overweight on their suitcases. So it ends up costing them more money in the long run. Would uh, the neck pillows count as this too? No, that is a necessity, I think. Okay. Well, it's an extra fluff, especially if you buy them at the airport. They're so much Oh, they're so expensive there. Yeah. Versus like buying them at the local Walmart or whatever. Yeah. So. And then on that same thing, Vane is talking about travel. The next thing on the list is souvenirs. Now, who, we all love buying souvenirs. I love going. We bought so much souvenirs at Disney World in Florida by souvenirs. And they saying instead of buying a trinket from the place like I Love New York t-shirt, we want to take a picture of you in front of the Eiffel Tower. Or, or the Eiffel, I mean, the, I mean, the, I the I Park State Building. Wrong, wrong, wrong country, you know. Wrong country. But one thing it says on here is frivolous is, and I would like to get your input on, it says that you shouldn't be buying mugs in every city that you go to. Wait a second. You know, I, <laughs> I, you know what's funny? I was at burlington coke factory yesterday and i was looking at they had this cute little mug aisle for like halloween stuff like i love nightmare before christmas and had this cute little nightmare before christmas mug it was my size that i like to use the bigger size and it was cute and everything i was like oh, 
do I need another mug? Because I got a whole cabinet full of them. They're like spilling out of the cabinet. I, I know, but that's know? our thing is whenever we go anywhere, what do we always do? Well, we like to have coffee for one. And if, and if we want to have coffee, if we can have coffee in the place we're staying at, we're not using those stupid paper, plastic, little paper cups, you know. That, or like the little thimbles. <laughs> but yeah, we're not using those little thimble things they give us. We want a real coffee cup. We buy our own coffee cups and we bring them home from every trip. And we love them because like then when we sit. So like uh, this morning, which cups did we? Oh, we, did we have? No, we didn't have coffee this morning. But yesterday we had our, I think we had like our Bass Lake mugs yesterday. Probably. But, yeah. yeah, we have Bass Lake. We have from Zion and like every place we go, we, we have get local, them. local San Diego mugs are like my favorite. Yeah, we know? love those ones with the little dolphins on them. And so, I mean, you know, when it comes to souvenirs, don't go overboard is my mentality. It's like invest in experiences versus stuff. But, you know, if you want to bring back one or two items, like it's not a bad thing. I just would say like we don't buy refrigerator magnets because we have stainless steel appliances. And I made that mistake one time of buying a magnet. And it's like it doesn't stick to anything. That's right. That, that, <laughs> you're absolutely right. You know, and also, too, I also love to take a lot of video footage and film footage, yeah. and, you know, and things like that. So for me, the ultimate souvenir that I like to take home from any trip is my videos that I take with the GoPros yeah. and put them together in a video montage. And the kids love that. Like they love when you put it together, everybody waits for it. We, once it's on the website, we like to watch it and like we'll Chromecast it onto the TV and it's super fun. And so those are the types of things that we should be investing in. And so, um, you know, on that, we're still on this like travel kind of mentality when it comes to this list. And the next thing is over the top camping equipment. Now, and, what do they possibly mean <laughs> okay, by that? What they mean is, Chris, you don't need to invest in purchasing that tent rack that you're really wanting to put on the back no, of your no, truck. No, 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 no. Get me out here. You would actually would use that. No, it's over the top. It is literally and physically. Yes. Literally over the top. <laughs> what she's talking about is that <laughs> it's all the rave right now. It's like exactly right now. It's a trend. It's a fact. <laughs> well, it's been a rave for a little while now. If you have an SUV or even a car, you can probably do this as a car, but a truck usually it works well or a big SUV. It's where on the top of the roof, there is these mounting points where they actually build this like it's called a rooftop tent. And it's all enclosed in this whole canvas closure thing. And when it all comes out, on, you know, you put it out and there's usually a ladder and some like sticks on it. So it kind of holds it up like uh, pegs and stilts or whatever. And there's a um, you're basically camping on a tent above your car. Yeah, I would be so what? worried I would roll over. Like what happens if I roll in the middle of the night and fall off I'm the ledge? I'm sure they got to figure it out, honey. I know? don't think they do. But I think it'd be kind of cool to have, you know, just to say you have it. You know, Exactly. I, and what they're saying here is it's one of the ways that you don't need to be spending your money. So I know, those things are cheap. They're not cheap either, no. by the way. And also probably like buying like fancy, like if you go skiing, do you need to buy the skis and buy the poles and buy the boots and all that junk? You probably just rent a lot of stuff and get Yeah, up there. I mean, if you're only going like once in a a blue moon then don't oh, like the jet skis remember oh yeah the wave runners that we went on like you're not gonna go at the sea dues and like just because you're gonna go one time and go purchase a sea do just so that you can go like riding out in the bay you can rent one or like when we went up to bass lake and we were like okay we want to take the kids out on a pontoon boat right. we rented it for a day versus buying one and investing in it forever because it would be it would have been super easy for us after that trip to be like, oh my gosh, the kids loved being on the boat so much. Let's go buy a boat. But then where are we going to take it around here? And where, do, where do you keep it to? You have to <laughs> exactly. buy storage. You have to pay for a rental place to keep it. Yeah. And boats do stand for break out another thousand. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what usually happens. You break know? out another thousand. I haven't heard that. Okay. Well, what's our last item on the list? We have two more, babe. No, we were just talking about the sports equipment. That was number 13. So we're on number 14. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Now we have a little mascot. We have her name. It's Clover. It's our little <laughs> puppy dog. We Clover love the podcast. So puppy. much. She is so spoiled. You know, by the time I go to a store and they got like pet store stuff, I'm like, I got to get her a little new toy to play with and something. She has so much stuff, but you know what she likes to do? Other than playing with the toys you pay for it, other than spending the big expensive money on those Kong, like, tennis balls at the store she doesn't like those she don't yeah she doesn't like those the only thing she loves are slippers right like human she slipper, has like human slippers five like. slippers that she plays between <laughs> slippers and socks right. and she has a little baby moose that she plays with but other than that like 
We don't buy her all kinds of toys. I will occasionally buy her a cute outfit. Like, uh, Does she really need that? <laughs> well, she, she said, Mom, I need to get dressed up for the date I'm going on. <laughs> One of my best friends, Rowena, always comes over with little outfits for Clover. And so what's so funny, Chris, is after we packed up the tr- the Explorer tonight, I was like getting a bark potty. So we have these disposable potties for Clover that make it super easy for her to travel. Um, and so what I did... <laughs> I saw one of her little fluffy dresses hanging up in the closet, and I know she's going to be with me on the night of the rehearsal dinner helping oh, me out. No. So I'm going to dress her up in her dress. Well, look, why don't you ask her first? She <laughs> she'll love it. <laughs> I'm sure she I'll will. I'll dress her up, and then she'll be able to come out, and she'll, you know, steal the show at the rehearsal dinner. Oh, she'll I'm be su- in, I'm sure she'll she be will. dressed to the nines. You know, it's funny. <laughs> speaking of dressing your dogs up, you know, Halloween is just around the corner. And I know. I need to buy her an outfit. There's so much. Well, it was at the Halloween store. They did have some cute outfits for uh, dogs and stuff and cats, I guess. I don't think you put a cat. I mean, yes, you can. I don't know. But uh, that's what they say is something that you buy that is probably a waste of money. Hint, hint, honey bun. <laughs> <laughs> Frivolous pet purchases. Well, I don't think I go way overboard. I mean, Clover has a couple of pet beds, which um, she does love. But other than that, like, Wait, it's not a microwavable heated bed, is it? No, but she did when we first got her have a microwavable like it had a microwavable warming pouch comfort puppy for the first couple of days. And it had a little heartbeat for her to like snuggle up with so that it made it sa- feel like it was her, that her, her mom that she was with. You know, first world dog problems. I know, <laughs> but you know what? The way I think about it is that she's like the most inexpensive kid in the household. And so if I need to buy her a little toy once in a while, make her happy, uh, I'm happy to do yeah, it. Yeah, I love buying her stuff, her toys. Remember, I go, it goes to like uh, Target. No, it was Target. It was like uh, Home Goods. Uh-huh. They had this section of pet stuff. And it's usually a pretty good deal. And stuff, right. Home Goods is pretty cheap stuff. And I was like, oh, a rubber chicken for something for her to play with. I don't know. <laughs> Some kind of fluffy something or a fluffy snake or a fluffy ball or something. And I get it to her. She played it for a little bit and stuff. There was one thing I got from her. She really, really liked. I can't remember what it was. Was it those giraffe toys? At oh, Costco? yeah. The llamas. The llamas from Costco. I got those are a little too big for her, though. Yeah. She's and they were small. too stiff for her. But she loves stuffed animals. And she's so tiny that she likes just the little squeaky things that are just like the size of the palm of your hand. And so I love to get them for her. But what's funny is the ones that she loves the most are the ones that she's had since she was first here when she was a baby. Oh, that's probably the smells yeah. and all that stuff and the texture. And she and she loves it. You know, uh, Clover, I'm going to miss her when she's gone this week. You I know? know, but she's going to be with me. And I'm so happy that she's going to be traveling with me. And so it's like taking another kid with packing everything up for her. Oh, she'll be great, though. Yeah. You know, she'll, be a good, she'll be a good girl for you. you know? Yeah, she totally will. But... You know, thanks so much for bringing this list today. It was fun to chat through things. And, you know, if you as you've been listening, definitely go through your finances and ask yourself, like the things that you're spending on, are they really necessary, especially in this time of inflation? Well, basically, could you live without it? We think about it like that. Could you live without it? Yeah. And, and, like, like just think back to that warranty one. Think, oh, I need that warranty. But like, really, if if something were to break on your vehicle that was, say, five hundred dollars, could you fix it? Probably. Yeah. You know? Definitely. So just you know, keep an eye on your finances. Keep an eye on your bank account. We're always here to try and help you out thinking about new things. And uh, it was fun chatting with you today, Chris. I know we didn't have a guest on the show, but um, speaking of that, we're going to be having no episode next week because we're going to be out of town spending much needed time with family. So we'll definitely uh, remind you of that later in the week. But listen to this twice and learn a little <laughs> bit extra from us and listen to an old episode if you miss us. And as always, you can reach out to us through our website, which is... It's chrisandchristineshow.com. And there you can find all of our links to K2 Radio, The Chris and Christine Show, Podtastic Audio, and Christine Smith Designs. And we'll be back with you in in two two weeks. weeks.